Today's shout out goes to Carlsbad Promotions. Thanks for supporting this channel on Patreon. I really appreciate it. Eighth grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit five, lesson 17, scaling one dimension. Problem number one, a cylinder has a volume of 48 pi centimeters cubed and a height h. Complete this table for volume of cylinders with the same radius but different heights. The table has a left-hand column with height in centimeters and a right-hand column of volume in centimeters cubed. The table starts out on the top with 1 h or 1 centimeter and the volume is 48 pi or 48 times pi centimeters cubed. 2 h or 2 centimeter would be double 1 h or double 1 centimeter. So the volume is going to be doubled. 2 times 48 pi equals 96 pi. This cylinder that's 2 centimeters in height has a volume of 96 pi centimeters cubed. The next cylinder has a height of 5 h or 5 centimeters. That's 5 times taller than the first cylinder. So we'll multiply 5 times 48 pi and that equals 240 pi. The height of this cylinder is 5 h or 5 centimeters and its volume is 240 pi centimeters cubed. The height of the next cylinder is h over 2 or half of h. That means it has half the height or a half a centimeter. Since the height's only a half a centimeter, the volume of this cylinder will be half of 48 times pi. Half of 48 times pi or 48 times pi divided by 2 equals 24 pi. So when the height is a half a centimeter, the volume is 24 pi centimeters squared. The height of the last cylinder is h over 5, or height divided by 5. That height is 5 times shorter than the original height, so the volume is going to be 5 times smaller than the original volume. 48 pi divided by 5. Since 48 pi divided by 5 is going to give us a mixed number, we can leave it as 48 pi divided by 5. So when the height of the cylinder is h over 5, the volume of the cylinder is going to be 48 pi over 5 centimeters cubed. Problem number 2. A cylinder has a radius of 3 centimeters and a height of 5 centimeters. A. What is the volume of the cylinder? To find the volume of a cylinder, you need to multiply pi times the radius squared times the height. Since the radius is 3 centimeters, we can substitute the r with 3. And since the height is 5 centimeters, we can substitute the h with a 5. Now the equation reads volume equals pi times 3 squared times 5. And 3 squared or 3 times 3 is 9. So now the equation reads volume equals pi times 9 times 5. 9 times 5 is 45. So the volume of this cylinder is pi times 45 centimeters cubed or 45 pi centimeters cubed. B. What is the volume of the cylinder when its height is tripled? The volume equals pi times r squared times height. The radius stayed the same, so if the height is tripled, we have to multiply the height times 3. The radius is 3 squared, or 3 times 3, which is 9, and the height is 5 times 3 because it's tripled. 9 times 5 times 3 equals 135. So the volume of this cylinder is 135 pi centimeters cubed. C. What is the volume of the cylinder when its height is halved? In other words, what is the volume of a cylinder when the height is half of 5 centimeters? If we cut the height in half, half of 5 centimeters is 2.5 centimeters. So we can substitute the h with a 2.5. The r is still a 3, and 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2.5 equals 22.5. The volume of the cylinder when its height is cut in half is 22.5 pi centimeters cubed. Problem number 3. A graduated cylinder that is 24 centimeters tall can hold 1 liter of water. 
What is the radius of the cylinder? What is the height of the 500 milliliter mark, the 250 milliliter mark? Recall that one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. Here's a graduated cylinder. Imagine its height is 24 centimeters tall and it holds one liter of water. That means its volume is one liter, which is also equal to a thousand milliliters. So we can say that its volume is a thousand milliliters. We can rewrite the formula as 1000 equals pi times r squared times 24 because the volume is pi times r squared times the height and the height is 24. So we substitute the h with the 24. Since we need to find the radius, we're going to divide both sides by pi times 24. On the right hand side, pi times r squared times 24 divided by 24 times pi leaves us with r squared. That's why we did it. Now on the left hand side, we also have to divide the thousand by 24 times pi. And 1,000 divided by 24 times pi equals 13 and 27 hundredths. So the radius squared equals 13 and 27 hundredths. What number times itself equals 13 and 27 hundredths? 3.64. So the radius of this graduated cylinder is 3.64 centimeters. This question also asks, what is the height of the 500 milliliter mark? Well, 500 milliliters is half of a thousand milliliters. So its height is going to be half of 24 centimeters. Half of 24 centimeters is 12 centimeters. That was the easy way. We could have substituted the V with 500 and then figured out the height by solving for H. Divide both sides by 13.27 times pi and h equals 12 or 12 centimeters. They also ask, what is the height of the 250 milliliter mark? Well, I know that 250 is half of 500, so we can just cut the 12 centimeters in half and get 6 centimeters. Or we can substitute the v with 250 solve for h or solve for the height by dividing both sides by 13.27 times pi and we see that the height is 6. The height is 6 centimeters. Problem number 4 from 8th grade unit 5 lesson 16. An ice cream shop offers two ice cream cones. The waffle cone holds 12 ounces and is 5 inches tall. The sugar cone also holds 12 ounces and is 8 inches tall. Which cone has a larger radius? The volume for both cones is 12 ounces. Since they both hold the same amount of ice cream or have the same volume, the shorter cone will have the larger radius. The taller cone will have the smaller radius. So the waffle cone has a larger radius. Problem number five from eighth grade unit five lesson 15. A six ounce paper cup is shaped like a cone with a diameter of four inches. How many ounces of water will a plastic cylindrical cup with a diameter of four inches hold if it is the same height as the paper cup? The two cups have the same diameter, which means they have the same radius. A cylinder with the same diameter and the same height holds three times the amount as a cone. It tells us that this cone holds six ounces of water. So that means that the cylinder is going to hold three times that. So the volume of the cylinder is 18 ounces because six times three is 18. Problem number six from eighth grade unit five lesson nine. Lynn's smartphone was fully charged when she started school at 8 a.m. At 9.20 a.m. it was 90% charged and at noon it was 72% charged. A. When do you think her battery will die? Let's make a chart with time on the left and percent charge on the right. At 8 a.m. it was 100% charged or fully charged. Then again at 9.20 a.m. it was 90% charged. And then finally at noon, 
it was 72% charged. From 8 a.m. to 9.20, an hour and 20 minutes passed and the phone lost 10% of battery. From 9.20 to 12, two hours 40 minutes passed and it lost 18% of battery. At this rate, if another 2 hours and 40 minutes passed, it would be 2.40 p.m. And let's say the battery lost another 18%. Then 54% of the battery would be charged. 2 hours and 40 minutes later at 5.20 p.m., the battery charge would be at 36%. And 2 hours and 40 minutes after that, it would be 8 o'clock p.m. And the battery life would only be 18%. And then finally, another 2 hours and 40 minutes later, at 10.40 p.m., the last 18% would drain out of the battery. So this is an approximation, so I'd say approximately 10.40 p.m., the battery would have zero charge. B. Is battery life a function of time? If yes, is it a linear function? Explain your reasoning. Yes, the battery life is a function of time, however, it is not a linear function. It took 80 minutes for her to lose the first 10% of the battery, and then it took another 160 minutes for her phone to lose another 18%. If the function were linear, it would lose exactly twice as much in 160 minutes as it did in 80 minutes. The example that I created was fairly linear, but not quite linear. Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.